Hey there, welcome to the Girl Go Global podcast, where faith and works are empowered. With every episode, we're embracing our multi-layered lives with faith, know-how, and grit. I'm your host, Dr. Jasmine, and I'm ready to go global with you. Let's get started. Welcome to the Girl Go Global podcast, where faith and works are empowered. I'm Dr. Jasmine, and I'm so excited that you decided to join me today. This podcast season has been phenomenal, y'all. I like... I can't even get into how refreshing it has been for me to speak with so many global girls who are out there living their God-given purpose. It is so refreshing. Not only that, I have had an opportunity to make new connections, build new relationships that I believe will be lasting connections. So if you haven't already heard, The Girl Go Global community is on YouTube, y'all. Roll over to YouTube at Dr. Jasmine Lee Morris and subscribe to my channel, first of all. And look for additional content because we are dropping videos, y'all. We are dropping live episodes. We are dropping inspirational content. And by the way, we got a blog. Have you subscribed to the Girl Go Global blog? Roll over to girlgoglobal.com and subscribe to the Girl Go Global community for inspiration to your inbox on a monthly basis. And maybe we'll drop in a few others here and there. So today, 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 I have with me Miss Lawana Harris. Lawana is an author, community leader, professional development consultant, and has served on various community boards, committees, and has been a speaker, and I should say is a speaker, and a panel discussion participant. She is from Tulsa, Oklahoma, y'all. Would you please, please, please welcome Lawana to the Girl Go Global community. Lawana, would you please introduce yourself to our community? Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Jasmine. I really appreciate it. Hello, 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 ladies. And um, there's gentlemen out there that's listening. Hello to you as well. Um, I am Luana, as Dr. Jasmine mentioned. I am from Tulsa, and I am a speaker. I'm an author. I am a consultant. Um, I love being able to just encourage and inspire and empower others to live to their fullest potential. Um, that's exactly what I do in everything. So I am here to just um, have a conversation with Dr. Jasmine today. And so we're, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Lawana, for joining me. I'm so excited to have this conversation. And I'm so excited that you are going to encourage our hearts to have not only grit, but guts to pursue our, pursue our passion and our purpose. So let's jump right into this conversation. Lawana, tell us how much guts it takes to live out our God-given purpose. Well, listen, you know what? So the church that I actually go to is called Guts. Mm -hmm. And that is where we talk, what we talk about is that you have to have the guts to serve God. You have to have the guts to be bold in your, um, and when you're speaking in the word, when you're talking to people, you have to have the boldness to do that. And it takes confidence and it takes um, just knowing what God has placed inside of you to do that. And so, you know, when I'm talking to other women, when I'm talking to people, I'm just telling you, you know, it takes it takes all of that. But you have to have, um, again, the confidence and that actually comes from God. You have to know who you are in God to to be able to actually do that. So it does. It takes it takes some, some good to, to do that. Thank you. Thank you. So I hear that you have a little birdie told me that you have a new devotional and I want to hear all about it. Tell us the name, what it's all about and tell us the value that you're offering to us to help us have guts. Absolutely. So it is called, the devotional is a 30 day interactive devotional and it's called Vision Beyond Measure, a 30 day interactive devotional to help you discover your next step. This Mm. actually is a fruit of an internship program that I went through at church. Um, And I really felt like it was the time to take what I was learning and to take what I was, um, what was being revealed to me and to really um, put it in a devotional. It was time for that. There were some things in my life a long, a while ago, a few years ago, and uh, I really felt like God wanted me to do a devotional then. And it's always been on my list. You know, I have like a list of things that, that, um, that I would like to do. And it's always been on my list because that's something that I really felt like was part of my purpose 
Um, and so this was the time to do it. I put it together and published it. And the value of it is, as you go through each devotional, it's like I said, it's 30 days, but there is a space for you. As I said, it was interactive. There's an actual space for you to write down your reflection. What is it that you have received or what was revealed to you while you were reading this devotional? Um, how does it apply to your life? So there's a section for you to write down those uh, areas that it's going to apply to. And then we have to be really specific in our prayers. So there's also a section in there where you can um, write down a specific prayer that is connected or related to that particular devotional. So this is really about intentionality. If you really want to go to your next step, whatever that next step is, whatever that next dimension is, you have to be really intentional about that and really praying and really helping uh, and really understanding what God is saying to you right there in that moment. So um, you can read four devotionals in one day or you can read one, a, you know, one, uh, one a day for 30 days. It's just however you feel like it works for you. But this is definitely a way for you to understand what your next step is. Mm, that's so good. Mm -hmm. So tell us how important is vision for our lives? Like, I know we talk about vision. We talk about vision boards a lot. The Bible says, write the vision and make it plain. Yes. Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> from your perspective, how important is having a personal vision yes. for our lives or maybe even a family vision? Absolutely. How important is vision for our lives? Oh, I mean, it, having a vision is necessary. It is a must. But I do want to um, really uh, help people understand that there is a difference between having vision and having sight. Mm. So when you have sight, you can see kind of what's right here. You, you know, you look at what's right in front of you. You see the actual physical um, elements of whatever it is. You can see that thing. But when you have vision, vision is something that you may not physically see but you can see it in your mind or you can see it in your spirit. It's something that is beyond where you are at the moment. So when someone has a vision or when God gives them a vision to do something, you may not actually see the road or the journey or even the step of how to get there, but you know that there is a, there is a particular place where you're trying to get to. That's the vision part of it. It's almost like a, you know, like a goal that you're getting to. But if you don't have vision or if you don't have um, that particular mindset around the, the uh, having a particular vision, uh, whether it's a vision for your family, whether it's a vision for, you know, where it is that you want to be professionally, where you want to be spiritually, where you want to be physically. I have, like me personally, I like to work out and I have a vision of what I want to look like. It's mm -hmm. not there yet. I don't see it, but I see it in my mind and I see it in the spirit. And so that's something that I'm working towards. So that's what, um, the importance of having vision. It's something to help you work towards your goal and help you work towards whatever it is that you're, that you're uh, trying to get to. That's good. And I heard you say, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh -huh. vision is seeing yourself where you want to be before you correct. get there. Correct. Correct. Totally agree. Yes. You have to see it, see it in your mind because you can't physically see it just yet because it's not there yet, but if you have the vision for it, then you know, okay, this is what I'm hit. This is what I'm working towards. This is what I'm heading towards. That's the vision that I'm, that I'm, that I have right before me. And that takes, it takes guts, first of all, to, um, to step on, to, to walk in faith, even towards that vision. It takes confidence. There's going to be people around you that may not see the vision like you. And that's okay because God didn't give them the vision. They get, he gave it to you. So you have to understand when there is a vision that you have. And then, of course, I also have to put out there, too, when God gives you a vision or you have the vision, you cannot share that with everybody because everybody is not going to see it the same way. So vision is, a necess is necessary. Vision is a must. And then also you have to be careful to, um, to protect that vision and then also to agree with people that um, that see the vision just like you, and that not everybody's going to do that. But I'm sure that's another that's another story. That's another <laughs> another <Wow>. podcast. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. And that's a lot of times why um, we're always encouraged, or well, many are always encouraged, not to share your vision with too many people. Right. Exactly. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, because they kiss. I mean, sometimes people 
they like to, and they don't, sometimes people don't do it on purpose, but when you have a vision that is beyond where you are now, people like to, or people tend to place on you their idea of their cap. And I say the cap, if you think of something um, like a bottle that has a cap on it, they can only see at like right at the moment. They don't see the vision that God gave you. They don't see that. So if you're sharing something with somebody that is not where you are mentally or spiritually, they're not going to see that. And so they're going to try to protect you and say, oh, you know what? You may not be able to do that when really, no, if God gave me the vision, he's right. He's going he's going to give me the provision for it. So you, it's, there's power and agreement, but you have to agree with the right people. And then also be really careful about setting those boundaries around who you share your vision with, because again, they mean well, um, sometimes it's people that, um, you know, they may not have the confidence or the boldness that you have, and that's okay. They're just in a different place, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, that's okay. But you have to be really careful and agree with the right people for the vision that God has given you. That's so good. That's good. I think that's a word. I recently had someone ask me a question. I'm mm-hmm. not going to share what the question was, but the question was totally <laughs> like off oh yeah what I mean is I got they know I got faith in this one area right but they asked me a question basically suggesting if did if it doesn't happen will you pursue x and I'm like wait a minute I ain't dead yet I'm still over here believing what you talking about exactly and if you can't believe with me I I try had no conversation with you right you need to believe you need to say what I'm saying and believe what I'm believing if I if my faith look weak you need yeah. to be encouraging me to continue to have the faith. Right. Not be asking me questions that's going to um, put doubt in my mind regarding what I'm believing God for. Right. Exactly. Well, the word even talks about where there's, you know, the, about the power of agreement, you know, where two or more gather, you know, I'll be in the midst and even talks about they're two or better than one because when one falls, the other one can lift them, lift them up. So the word is always talking about not going anywhere. Even in Genesis, it talks about, you know, the man is not supposed to be alone. It's not good for man to be alone. So there's so many different words and so many, I mean, even in particular when, you know, let's talk, you know, talk about Hannah when she was wanting to birth a baby, she was wanting to have this baby um, only until when she went to the, to the, uh, to the priest and the priest agreed with her is when she got pregnant and was able to have Samuel. So there's so many different episodes and so many different stories and so many different examples in the word where it shows you that you have to have proper agreement and you have to have agreement with the right person in order for that vision to come to pass. Um, And again, sometimes you just have to be led to the right person. That means, you know, you can't have everybody everybody praying for you. Um, There's certain people that, you know, may pray against you. So you really have to have that spirit of discernment to know who it is that you are um, that you need to be connected with when you are trying to fulfill a purpose, trying to fulfill the vision, um, just trying to walk in the calling that God has for you. So, uh, and it takes guts to do that. It takes it very takes it takes confidence, and it takes guts <laughs> to does. tell somebody, "I'm not there yet." Yes, we we, we still over here. We still over here in faith. We right. still over here. Stay over here. Stay in the stay on this train. Okay. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. It's just it's the level of boldness and. You know, um, yeah, just, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> so in your devotional, yes, I'm sure you are giving stories or anecdotes or just brief narrative about various topics on vision, be- having vision beyond measure. Can you give us uh, a few uh, tips, tools, or strategies to help us have that vision beyond beyond measure? If you have one or two things to share with the Global Girls. Yeah, absolutely. So a few of the tips, uh, definitely you have to be prayerful um, in order to have the vision. So there there have been times in my life personally where I feel like, and I know I'm like, Lord, there's, I know there's more. I don't know what it is that you're telling me. I don't know what it is that you're showing me. However, I had to be and go into intentional prayer. Um, I've had, I have journals. I've written down so much stuff. I've written um, you know, I've journaled or written down scripture, whatever God is telling me in the moment. So you really have to be prayerful 
Um, and then it's, uh, and it's not in any particular order, but another thing that you have to do is really be intentional. Um, and I say intentional, that intentionality takes action. So faith, we know that faith, faith without works is dead. So you definitely have to take action and be intentional about your vision or trying to find out that vision of what it is that God has for you. And what that looks like is sometimes you may have to literally dig, not sometimes, you're going to have to dig in that word. You're going to have to read books. You're going to have to read, um, you know, just the word, maybe different versions. Um, there are times when I'm reading the message Bible. There are times when I'm reading um, the New King James. And there's, there's times when I'm, that I'm reading the New Living Translation. And so you really have to be intentional about understanding what the word says about your life and what the word says and what God says about you. That is mm. what's going to give you the confidence to really walk in faith because God gives us a measure of faith. We just have to walk in it. We have, it's already there. We just have to walk in it. And we have to, again, we have to be prayerful and then we have to be intentional about that. And then also we, uh, one of the things that has been on my mind uh, for the past couple of days, I went to a conference on Tuesday, but the three words stay the course. There mm. are going to be times when it's going to be lonely because as you continue to grow and as you continue to move further, close, you know, closer to God, closer to what it is that he has for you, there's going to be people that are going to disconnect and it's going to be very hurtful. It's going to be uncomfortable because you're like, man, this is my girl. This is my dog. We cool. We've been cool, but it just happens like that. And there's, you, and you have to be okay with that but you also just have to stay the course. There was also a time in my life where I was going through things emotionally. I was like, I don't want to do this purpose thing no more. I'm done. Like I don't want, and that's, un that is so uncomfortable when you're trying to walk out of purpose. That's the most uncomfortable thing to do. And I said, you know what? I can't even do it, but stay in the course uh, when there are obstacles, stay in the course when there are distractions, stay in the course when the enemy is trying to come at you, stay in the course. When you don't even understand or don't know what's going on, stay the course. You know, when there are, um, you know, things are happening that you really don't have any control over, you have to stay the course. Um, and so those are just, I mean, of course there's more, but those are the three things that really come to mind is just being prayerful, being intentional, and then of course, stay in the course. That's good. Yeah. That's good. But so often, oh man, I wrote a um a post about that recently. Social media post about staying the course. Mm. So often circumstances in life will throw us off course. Oh, absolutely. I got Early some yeah. <laughs> um news one day at a, a meeting and I was like, Oh my god, that kind of hit me like God, what's next? Yeah. What what that what what what's going on? Yeah. Not five minutes later, I hear the Holy Spirit say to me, my plans have not changed for you. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What does that mean? Stay the course. Don't get distracted. Oh, exactly. that's a word. Exactly. Don't get distracted. <laughs> I feel that in my shine now. Don't right. get distracted. <laughs> Stay the course. What you just heard. Yeah. Stay the course. Stay the course. That's Be it. intentional. Yeah. Because it's easy. It's easy to get up because it's just because of what you just said, we get distracted and there are things that are good things and we can be distracted. And that's one of the things I had to learn um, as well in, in regards to just staying the course and keeping with the vision. You, There's going to be some good things that come to you. There's going to be some good opportunities. There's going to be some good ideas that come to you, some good people that will ask you to do stuff. However, that may not be God. Um, it may not be the God things. It may not be um, those things that are from him. They may be good, but it may not necessarily be God. Mm, that's good. That's good. My, my, my. All right now. <laughs> you giving us the guts, okay? We getting the guts. We getting vision beyond measure. Now, you've recently ran for a office down there and well, over there I should say from Maryland <laughs> over there <laughs> and uh Tulsa Oklahoma yeah. I want to talk a little bit about that vision that you had I want to talk about the guts that you had to run for office yeah. um in your in your city tell us more about that and 
help us understand what vision it took for you to run for a political office. Yeah, so I am um, not a politician at all. So this was something that was very new for me. And it was um, something that was on me and in my spirit of probably, you know, probably a few years before last year. Um, but I remember someone coming to me and she had no idea that I was wanting to run and she spoke a word. And, uh, and I just felt like I was really um, just leading me to do that. I did not get the majority of the votes. However, I will say that it opened so many doors and offered us and opened so many different connections that, um, I mean, it was such a great experience. And so even though, you know, I did not say, I, and I say I didn't win, but I don't say that I didn't win. I just say I didn't get the majority of the votes because I feel like I still won just because of the connections and the relationships that I um, established out of that. So that vision, that whole vision, um, you know, it was something that was very uncomfortable. It was something new. Um, but I did it because I felt like and I, that I was led to do it. And it was, you know, like I said, it just opened so many other doors. That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you anticipate running again for another office, that office? Any thoughts there? Um, I have not decided. So. <laughs> That that's forthcoming. It may be something else, but um, I, I'm still trying to trying to figure that out. I'm, okay, no that. worries. There's still time. You still have time, child. I do. <laughs> I do. So I'm talking to Miss Lawana Harris. She's yeah. talking about the what it takes to have the guts to have that vision beyond measure. She has a new devotional, y'all. Um, you're gonna roll over and get her devotion, vision beyond Mar- Mar- measure. Where can they locate your devotional if they so choose, Luana? Yes, my devotional is on Amazon right now. Um, Again, it's called Vision Beyond Measure. um, And you can purchase it on on Amazon. Um, I mean, and that's that right now, that's the only place you can get it. And until, until a few weeks. So I can't really say right now, but that's the (laughs) only place that you can get it today at this particular moment okay so more to come coming to uh, a a bookstore near you in the very near future but for now if you're listening roll over to amazon and grab your devotional 30 days to get toward vision beyond measure now lawana tell what it means to have the faith to pursue passion to pursue purpose Mm-hmm. with faith, know-how, and grit. What what faith does it take for you to get up every day and be that community leader, to be that inspirational author, to be that professional consultant? Where do you get the faith? So as I said um, before, God gives us a measure of faith. He talks about that in the word. He gives us a measure of faith. And you have to literally walk it out. And what that looks like is, um, again, you have to be aware and self-aware of where you are in the moment, like what, what are you doing in the moment? Where are you in this season of life? I've had so many seasons and we all have, we've had various seasons. Um, I had a, you know, season of, of, of divorce. I've had a season of lack. I've had a season of, um, you know, struggles, but then there's also been seasons of blessings. There've been season of overflow. There've been various seasons, but as I mentioned, you each in, in, in every season, Staying the course looks like faith um, and understanding that all you have to continue to do is to take a, take another step. Mm-hmm. So my faith actually has come from, um, come from God. And at the same time, being and learning how to walk in it, I had to literally, as I was going through obstacles in my life, had to go uh, and know God for myself. Um, mm. I couldn't depend on the prayers of my mother, my grandmother, my, you know, great grandma, my aunts, because I had to actually be in a position where I had to know God and the power of his might uh, for myself. And that happened and has continued to happen just because of, you know, just things that he's shown me, things, you know, just just literally walking in faith. So that comes from just taking a step of of taking one step. That's where faith comes from is just taking one step. 
and mm. taking another step and taking that next step. Because I truly believe that even though you may not know what that next step looks like, if you just take the step, I truly believe that God will give you enough light just for that particular step. Mm, um, so and so you don't, you may not know that next one, but if you just take it, take that one step, he'll show you exactly what you need to see in that particular step. So that's what wow. it looks like. Just taking a step, just, just taking one step. Wow. Mm-hmm. That sounds like living a life where you are not focused on the distractions of life, but rather right. you are super intentional right. about what you mm-hmm. heard God say about mm-hmm. that vision that's been placed on your heart. You're yeah. super intentional about not looking to the right or the left. Right. <laughs> Correct. But focusing on that purpose, that mm-hmm. destiny, that vision that you have. Right. Laser focus. That's what that sounds like. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. It is. And again, you know, there's so many things that as mothers, as uh, leaders, as community leaders, as uh, professionals, you know, we have so many hats and so many things that are pulling at us, especially if, you know, if we're, if we're married, if we, um, you know, have spouses and if we have maybe parents that we're taking care of, there's so many things that, that are pulling for our attention and it is a struggle to, I mean, to, to stay focused. It is a struggle to, um, to have that intentional time. There are times when I'm like, oh gosh, I didn't even read my word today. Or, oh man, I just, you know, I, I need to do this. Or there's so many things because there's so many things pulling for our attention. But those are, that's when you have to press in even harder um, and press in even, even more when you have so many other things. And it is challenging. But one of the things I found out is that when it says to seek first the kingdom, like you have to seek seek your word in the, you know, not, I'm not going to say just in the morning because there are times when I read in the afternoon, times when you read, you know, whenever. But it's just really being intentional about about that about that time and it is just you know maybe sometimes just reading the story reading the scripture reading you know reading a proverb or just reading a chapter um or reading a book or you know it's something but you have to be really intentional about that Mm, that's so good Mm -hmm. so after what they say after all i've been through (laughs) after all you've been through all of life's ebbs and life's flows right What do you wish you'd known before you started? Like, is there anything that you wish you'd known that you can share with someone else to help encourage them not to go a direction you may have went or to approach something from a new perspective? Um, you know, I really, I honestly, I really cannot say, um, that I wish I would have not, I probably, well, let me say this. I probably wish I would have done things differently, but there are things that if I knew some of the things then or in my younger self that I know now, I probably wouldn't have been in the season of my life to either value it or apply it like it should have been, or either um, really understand it. So so I look at it as I talked about seasons earlier. So God gives you grace in every season of your life. He gives you grace in every level of your life. Um, and so I, I don't regret anything. Could I have made better decisions? Absolutely. But I don't regret anything uh, in my life because it has made me the person that I am today. And I even think about if my life had been even 0.001 second different, I will be a totally different person. Um, so I'm very grateful for every experience. I'm very grateful for every, um, everything that I have gone through. Um, and it, because it literally has made me the person that I am today. So, uh, I'm just very appreciative of that. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. And I, and, and it took, but it took me a while to get there. Um, mm-hmm. it, it really took me a minute and I really, it, and I had to understand it and accept that um, that if you, you know, if I didn't go through some of the things that I, that I've gone through, I would be the person. So just to encourage somebody out there, you may, it may be challenging, it may be hard, but just think about, 
what it would look like. Again, having that vision of what it would look like on the other side, and then just work towards that. Because there's been there's been times that I've ha- actually had to do that, even in the midst of chaos. Um, having that vision, literally vision beyond the measure that I was getting at that current moment, because mm-hmm. it was, the, the measure was zero. <laughs> but I had, but I had the vision beyond that, and I had to keep that in the forefront. And it's it's hard, it's challenging, but um, you know, it's it's doable. It's doable. I it is. This. It's doable. It's doable. Mm-hmm. That might be another book title. Oh, Doctor Jasmine, I think you just gave me another book title. <laughs> <laughs> it's doable. Because I was going to ask you for a word of encouragement. For yeah. someone pursuing their purpose with guts. And I just heard you say it. It's doable. Yeah, it's doable. It is. Uh, regard, you know, regardless of where you are in your life, um, regardless of, you know, because just a little bit of a, a smidgen of, I, I mean, I had gotten to the point after my divorce where I literally lost everything. I came back home to Tulsa, Oklahoma with some clothes in my car and my babies. Um, and there, you know, it's doable. Um, mm. It's doable to start over. Um, there was a moment where I went, you know, started my career, um, I, I went back to grad school with three children working full time. It's doable. Um, taking a risk going from, you know, what I love and normally what I would, what I want to do. And I'm now learning something totally different. It's doable. It's doable to, you know, to, to save, to save money and to do things that, you know, that are outside of your, your norm, it's doable. Like it's, I mean, we serve a big God. And I think sometimes we, we don't, we don't really realize that and really realize the power that that's within us. Um, We just have to have a different perspective. I heard the other day at church that when we are looking at something, we have to have and look through the lens of faith and not the lens of fear. So when we have that perspective, then everything is totally different. Um, and my, so, my, my. Uh, girl, listen, I, I'm telling you that that right there that I've, it, that changed my my. I've heard it before, but I think it, it hit me a little different. When you're looking through something, you have to look through the lens of faith and not the lens of fear. And the lens of faith says it's doable. The lens mm-hmm. of faith says God is bigger than that. Um, the lens of faith says I, I I can take a step and I'm gonna have exactly what I need for this particular step. Um, and the lens of faith is just saying that you know what I'm gonna be intentional about my purpose and I'm gonna walk this thing out. That was so good because it's doable, y'all. It is doable to pursue passion, purpose, and vision with Absolutely. faith, know-how, and grit. And so, Luana, the last question I have for you is. What does it mean for girls to go global? What does it mean? Um, going global means going beyond where you are in your current state. So when you think about, um, you know, you hear organizations, I'm a global organization, we're a global organization. That means we are all over the world. That means we are not just um, in one place. We are not Um, just in one city. We are all over the world. And so when you are talking about um, having that global mindset or um, going global, that means you are going beyond your comfort zone. You are expanding your comfort zone. You are expanding your knowledge. You're learning new skills. You're learning um, and and touching base with new people. You're networking. I love to network. Um, You're networking with people, but even more even more importantly, going global spiritually means that you are asking God for a, a deeper um, knowledge of him and who he is. Because, you know, I, I always say, I just don't want to go to the next level. I want to go to the next dimension because mm-hmm. the dimensions are so much, um, so much bigger. So when you're thinking about that, you are expanding, you're, you're expanding who you are um, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, personally, professionally, and all area financially in all areas of your life. So you're just not staying in one place, but you are expanding um, and you are growing and you are reaching further um, beyond where you are at the moment. That's, That's what it means to go global for me. Go global. Go global. 
Yes, (laughs) ma'am. So, Luana, I want to thank you for joining me. This has been such a refreshing conversation. I believe that you are truly a global girl. I believe that you are reaching your calling with faith, know-how, and grit, and guts. How about that? And so, (laughs) if people want to connect with you, how can they do that? Absolutely. So, I'm on Facebook under uh, Luana. It says Bumpers Harris is, is hyphenated. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn under Luana Harris, MHR for Massive uh, Human Relations. I'm also on uh, LinkedIn under SkyMax Business Strategies as well. And on Instagram under SkyMax Business Strategies. And that's um, I am Luana Michelle, Luana.Michelle on Instagram. And I'm also on TikTok. So every so often, I'll throw a uh, throw a video or something on uh, on TikTok, but um, but those are the main areas that you can you can reach me, and then also my website LuanaMichelle.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome! Just roll over to those social media streets and look up Luana, connect with her, and don't forget to get the devotional. I believe it will be a blessing to you. So. This has been the Girl Go Global podcast where faith and works are empowered. Please, please, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to share. We would love, love, love to hear how you are enjoying our content. We would love to hear what you would love for us to talk about. So send me an email at hello at girlgoglobal.com. Girl Go Global.